number you have dialed. Have your report. I'm fickle, my heart, and how I'm losing my eyes. I struggle to find any truth in your lies. And now my heart stumbles on things I don't know. The weakness I feel I must finally show. When in your eyes I can change what you see. But your soul you must keep totally free. Is It Nefarious will be a series of episodes. In these episodes, we will attempt to take a look at both sides of the story of various nefarious topics. These exercises are presented for you to have the opportunity to hone your own discernment, take what resonates, and leave the rest. These will be exercises in big thinking, some mental yoga, if you will. And with that, let's begin. Is it nefarious? <laughs> episode 1, The Smooth Operator. In this episode, we will take a look at the nefarious nature of nefariousness itself. Evil. Does it exist, or is it just people behaving badly? Well, let's take a look. Johnny, roll the tape. Yes, thank you, Helen. This is Fred Stone, and we are live on the streets of Metropolis City Anywhere. We are here today to inquire if anyone has seen the devil. Let's see if this man will help us out. Excuse me, excuse me, sir, sir. Have you seen the devil today? Oh, well, I, uh, I saw people being robbed. You saw the devil robbing someone. Well, well no, I saw a person robbing someone. But that's bad, so it's the devil. You know, you know what I mean. But no actual devil. No. No. Thank you, sir. That's a nice talk. Alright, well, perhaps this lady... Excuse... Ma'am? Ma'am, excuse me? Could... Could you tell me if you saw the devil today? Oh. Good grief. You're kidding, right? War. Famine. Exploitation. Corruption. Do... Do I need to continue, or... You got my point in that little notebook of yours. I got it. You saw the devil doing those things today. Physically doing it with its own two thumbs. Well, no. Just people's actions and words, I suppose. So, no actual devil. Alright, ma'am. Thank you so much for contributing. Thank you. Well, there you have it, Helen. Word on the street is that no one has seen the devil today. Now, back to you. The argument that a nefarious adversary exists is a long-told story. This adversary, call it by whatever label you choose to use from your point of view, here we will just say evil, really needs no introduction and I really do not need to lay out the facts that exist for the story that it exists. But the one very important point to make about the concept of the nefarious adversary is that if it were nefarious the very first thing that it would do would be to hide all the evidence make you believe it isn't real a master criminal would hide all the evidence even better yet they would position themselves to never be implicated in the first place the crime could never be traced back to a master criminal so if it were nefarious, step one, make you believe it doesn't exist. Now the opposing side of that theory doesn't get as much airtime, doesn't get as much cultural play. That's the theory that humans are bad <laughs> and they just behave badly. If we stick to the empirical facts, well, the fact is, is that we have no physical evidence that evil exists as a sentient being. We don't have physical evidence that good or God or goodness or whatever label you would like to use for that exists in physicality either. We can say it's real, but in truth, it's a story. And this leaves us with, well, there's just plain bad people doing just plain bad things. This is what we have evidence of, our behavior, our thoughts, our words, our actions. These are the only things that disprove or prove that good or evil 
exists. It's in humanity's thoughts, actions, and words. And this is good news, because then it means it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if evil exists. It doesn't matter if humans are bad. Because what does matter is there is a choice involved. Both theories could be true, and both could be false. But it still leaves us holding the bag. We are the ones responsible, regardless of which scenario is correct. Take in the big picture, 20,000 foot view. You are consciousness inhabiting physical matter. This is the baseline fact of the matter, so to speak. You are sentient. Your consciousness is self-governing. It is sovereign. There is no one, there is no thing that can force you to do something against your will. Think about it. At one extreme, holding your will, your choice, could cost you your physical body. And I realize that the subject of being murdered is a gray area here. I'm using this scenario as an allegory to demonstrate the scope of the power of your will. Meaning, at one end of this spectrum, there is the question, would you die for what you believe in? Your belief, remember, is what you choose, it is your will. Which highlights another question. What is your will worth to you? What's your price to pimp it out to get what you think you want? You want material possessions? Are you willing to lie, cheat, steal? Are you willing to give your time to a job that you don't agree with anymore? Are you willing to allow relationships in your life that you know are destructive and or unbalanced that don't serve the highest good for everyone? Relationships with people, things, behaviors? We have to look at these things and ask these questions because the fact tells us that our adversary, whatever label you want to use from your point of view, the reality is it doesn't have any thumbs. This adversary exists nowhere but in the thoughts, actions, and words of a human being. Humanity is the only evidence we have that it exists. We are responsible for its manifestation, whether that be good or bad. The adversary can't make you do anything. It can't make you be anything you are not willing to be. This is why knowing what you are not, knowing what you are not willing to be, is really the only thing you need to know here. When you know what you are not willing to be, you are left with what you are willing to be, your authentic self. Look at your shadow self. It can only be a shadow as long as you don't shine light on it. The adversary is helpless, no thumbs, remember, helpless without your willingness. Shadows can get distorted and blown out of proportion. The object creating a shadow can easily be misunderstood, misinterpreted, if one only sees the shadow, but never looks for the object casting it. Think about this. If you had only ever seen your shadow, you had never seen your reflection, the only way you had ever seen yourself was from the shadow that you cast, what sort of image do you think you would have of yourself? How true to your nature would it really be? Your nature, your words, your actions, your thoughts are what is casting that shadow. So take a look. It's only as dark as you are. So, is nefariousness nefarious or are humans just bad? The Is It Nefarious episodes are presented for your discernment. It is interactive, and if you have a topic that you would like to consider the nefarious nature of, leave it in the comments. And thanks for listening.